My name is Eduardo, and today, well, we are going to have a kind of a tutorial, okay? It is not like a complete tutorial, uh, and basically this is the thing that we are going to, uh, I'm going to show you today, okay? That is this kind of uh, simple uh, kind of game, of Mario game, okay? It is just uh, running Mario, okay? I am using some sprites from, from Mario World, I guess. And I just add here a platform that is like moving, okay, so it's like an infinite scrolling uh, background. And we have also a mountain and a cloud, okay, so basically that is the idea. So uh, I was just trying to uh, work with this thing about the scrolling uh, background, okay, uh, well, well, I'm going to show you, okay? Basically, the blocks. I'm going to explain you a little bit. Um, if you want, maybe in another video, I can make it a step by step, okay? Well, that is the app, okay? So, if you check, we have here the back, the this platform that is just moving, 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 moving. Okay, and we don't have the mountain because the mountain needs uh, like moving in the x-axis, but the canvas that you cannot see, it is bigger than the screen, okay? So, um, that's the idea. Okay, so the screen, uh, the canvas, it is three times the size of the screen, talking about the width. Yeah, and here I have just the frames. Because I was checking that everything was okay. The frames about Mario, okay, it is just five frames. Uh, the cloud, it is moving a different speed from, from the mountain. The mountain is moving to another speed, okay. Both are sharing the same clock, but moving at a different speed. And that's it. Well, basically, that is the idea. So I'm going to show you here uh, about the process of this thing. Okay, well, just let me move some things here, just to make them clear. Here, this is one. We move this a little bit. I guess that's okay. It's here. For this video, uh, or oh, for this app, I use a GIMP, okay? So let's put this thing here. That's it. Well, the first thing that you have to do is go and get some images for your uh, game, or you can draw them yourself if you are an expert in this kind of uh, pixel art or something. Okay, or you can get some just to practice. For example, I just uh, was trying to find something for Mario, like Mario sprites, I guess, or something. And then you have some images and then you have to get the ones uh, you prefer so for example you have here this one and that's it once you get this thing you have to save it and then you have to open it in maybe your um, your image editor if you use Photoshop or if you use uh, like me GIMP okay so in this case, I use GIMP, and then I have the frames here. These ones uh, were the ones I use, and I was just uh, cutting and pasting one by one in a new file. And if you check, I have here, just copy and paste, and then you just try to move them uh, to make them aligned, okay? So I have here in this case, I have all the frames. And game has a feature just to see if like uh, animation or something that is in animation and you can see this thing okay it's little very small so but I guess it's okay just to make sure that everything is quite aligned okay so well that was the idea or maybe you can just cut some frames or something and that is the idea just to get the file the Sprites, you cut them, paste them, and align them. Okay, you just move them. Well, after you get your your images ready, well, you have to export one by one. 
for example you export it as a PNG export and then you have your PNG here for example I have one two three four five okay then I got the same way I got this thing uh, these graphics I got one for backgrounds okay I got the background I just got the mountain so if you check I just got the mountain and crop it I just cropped the mountain to have a size uh, 512 times 256 so I recommend this size okay when you are like using this remember power of 2 or the values of your uh, images is the best thing to avoid mistakes or errors or something weird when you see your graphics okay then I use here one of these things one of these blocks to make a pattern so I make a pattern and then I just scale it okay so this is a process that you have to do in game okay so that's not uh, pretty hard but if you need just let me know in the comments if you want to know how to get these things using this kind of uh, patterns then I use the cloud just cut it from here and just paste it and then just draw something and export it as two different uh, clouds yes well after that you have your graphics you have to import all of your graphics into um, a App Inventor so you go to App Inventor and you just upload all your files okay if you check I have here my files my clouds my platform and I'm just missing the mountain that I just save it here all with transparent uh, background and that's it yes then you imported them you just have to prepare all your scene for this I use a canvas <clears throat> no background for the canvas uh, I use sprite for Mario sprite for, for the platform and sprite for the mountain um, this ball I just use it as a button because I was lazy to make a button or something okay or a layer or disappear everything so I use this kind of uh, thing as a button I'm going to show you how if you check at the beginning of the app uh, let me check what is it uh, I guess it's Mario or something oh, just give me a second running I guess it's this one well this was the first uh, thing that I was trying okay so this is not like finish this one uh, so but this is not the one I touch it okay so this is the part so I using this just a uh, circle as a button okay when I touch this I start everything so uh, then we have a sprite for the platform for the cloud okay I use two sprites for platforms both have the same graphic the platform okay so it's this is to make this illusion that the back uh, the platform it is like an infinite scrolling background okay so that is moving yes so you need to have two uh, different uh, sprites for the platform using the same image yes so well that is basically the idea then you have the class sprite and we are going to use three clocks one is the one that i use to load the default values okay i enable this and I set it to 25 then I have the any clock that this is going to move Mario I, it, I set it to 12 you can try different values and then I set it this uh, BG clock that is for the background uh, I mean the platform the uh, mountain and for the beautiful cloud well then I went here and then I started as I told you I used the first clock for loading clock so this is just to resize the initial thing okay the initial values uh, the initial elements so this thing the cloud if you check it is in proper place the mountain and the platform the platform it is over the the end of the the, the screen height okay and the mountain it is over the platform that is basically the idea okay and I do that in this a uh, kind of procedure okay so if you want you can just uh, pause this and check it and I'm going to explain you first I set the canvas the canvas as I told you okay 
it is not the same size I uh, it is not the same size as the screen the canvas we cannot see it but it's bigger than the screen the screen is the thing that you can see in your device yeah so in this case imagine that this is my screen but my canvas is bigger so my canvas it is three times the screen okay so it's like having here one and other so I can show you this I explain this in another video okay but imagine that this is my screen and then I have oh sorry give me, give me a break then I have this one so and this is my canvas imagine that this is the size of my canvas it is three times one screen okay so this is the screen and of course I center everything in the designer okay so if you check in the screen uh, that's important okay you go to designer in screen everything is center uh, align horizontal it is center yeah in that case uh, the thing that we are seeing here in the screen it is just the uh, middle part the middle part of the big canvas okay so remember this is the screen and this is canvas 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 three times the size of this screen. well that's important to know okay um well uh, the original value for the canvas the zero this is zero in x and y this is zero okay so zero is not here so if you set something to zero it will appear on the here yeah and well, the height is the same as the screen, okay, so no problem. And remember, values get bigger here when you go to the right, and smaller when you go to the left. And bigger to the down, uh, or bottom, and smaller when you go to the up, okay, upper part. Well, that is something that you to have in mind. Well, then we continue. I set a color for the background okay for the canvas for the background color that is this color I got it from Inkscape uh, from GIMP here because the original image has this color so I just take this thing and I got this one and I got the values these are the values and that's it okay and then I just set these values uh, into uh, my app okay um, Um, well, um, in this case, well, these uh, are just initial values in the in screen. If you check, we have first, um, we make Mario, the Mario sprite invisible, okay? So I don't want it to have it at the beginning. Then I have just the platform sprite visible, the mountain visible, the cloud visible, okay? Then we have, um, I just set the height and width for all the sprites for the mountain, for the platform, and from the and for the uh, cloud. Yes, and after you uh, set the size for them, you have to place them. Okay, so just oh, uh, remember this. Please don't uh, uh, switch the order. In this case, don't just first place the sprites and then just set the size for them. No, it is first resize them and then you just place them okay if you check here I just check the positions okay and uh, the X and the Y um, for example to place this the platform you check the platform first I just set the platform and uh, X to zero okay so the first platform is in zero so it is more or less like in this part on the left side the platform 2 it is next to this the platform number one okay so it is taking the width of the platform sprite plus its position so it is like in the center so this platform that we are seeing here it is platform number two and platform number one is on the left okay uh, for the mountain to place the mountain over the platform okay we just set here its y position okay minus the height of the mountain okay 
the y position of the platform that it's here it is in this part is this height here is the point minus the height of the mount the mountain okay and we set it over here this is the size of the month then um, for the others well for the cloud it, it was just at the 20% of the height of the screen and that's the idea so this is the first procedure okay this procedure remember is just to set the default values to start this game and for this I am using a clock first I set a variable that is loading times I set it to zero and then I create this condition uh, for the clock remember this clock uh, it it is enabled okay so when you start uh, your app and starts running the procedure gets here if loading times it is less than five well we are going to increase this value one two three four and five okay so and when we finish the five times we are going to disable this clock basically and we are going to call the in screen this big procedure we're going to call it okay every time we end a cycle so and we're making sure we are resizing everything okay five times because sometimes when you have graphics sometimes have inventor I don't know uh, get stuck okay or it's not resizing everything maybe just the platform but not the mountain so that's that's the idea okay and uh, that's why I am using that instead of screen initialize okay well then we are going to ah well here I have another procedure that is the start the game and I am going to use this when I touch this big uh, black circle instead of a button but you can add a button or sprite that it says to start the game or something then in this start to start the game start moving everything we are going to first make this circle invisible then Mario visible and then we are just going to set the sprite the size of Mario the width of Mario I just set it to the 10% of the uh, height of the screen and the width I set it to uh, divided by 2 because Mario in this kind uh, in this thing it has like a proportion okay it is like the height it is 2 times the width so that's why I just did that then for Mary sprite uh, the position in X and Y well first I set is X position remember X axis uh, more or less at the half of the screen a little bit more okay of the canvas not the screen sorry so I am using this value okay so that's why and the Y it is check I am placing Mario over the platform to place it over the platform I do this first I use the height of the canvas minus the sprite, uh, the platform. Okay, so in this case, is here. So this is the point, but Mario will be like covered by this. So in that case, this value minus the height of Mario, and it will place it over the platform. And then I just enable the animation clock for Mario and the background clock that it's moving the scrolling uh, elements okay mountain cloud and platform yeah so and I load this procedure in when we touch this big circle so when I touch it everything starts moving Mario is in the position this thing is moving the two uh, remember that we have two platforms okay the one the two and they give this illusion that they there is just one now let's check let's check <laughs> let's check sorry if you check we uh, enable the first clock that is Mario and we use a simple procedure I have five images all of them called one two three four five dot png okay so now I created here a variable that it's frame I set it to zero and then I just create a condition if the frame the current frame it is uh, less than five so we are going to set the global frame okay we are going to increase it by one so we go to one if you check here it is really fast it is one two three five and when we get five we get to uh, zero again and zero plus one it is one 
okay so that's the idea we set this thing Mary sprite we're going to check uh, the picture of the sprite of Mario we're going to change it every time we end the cycle in this clock so we join the global frame for example in this case the first one is one dot PNG so I am using the image and then when we is uh, increase this value to 1 again, uh, by 1, it is 2 now, 2.png, and that's the way we have this kind of animation. I just use the screen title just to check everything was okay. Yeah. Um, but also, well, if we are in this value that is less than 5, we increase the value. But if we got, uh, if this global frame it is not less than 5, I mean, it is bigger, so we are going to set or reset this value, the global frame to zero, and we continue again this kind of loop. Okay, uh, let me just remove this. Thing. Then uh, remember that I told you that there were two clocks. Now let's go with the clock that is moving everything. I mean the scroll, the mountain, and the cloud. Okay. Ah, well, the any clock is the one that is in the animation procedure for Mario. Then we create another variable, speed background. So this is the speed that we will have in the, for the background for all the elements. I set it to 40, so you can change it, to experiment. And I insert this in the other clock. So let's check the procedure. Basically, the idea is pretty simple. Uh, remember, at the beginning, I set my my two platforms like this platform number one was here let's set it to another color and platform number two I set it to here so they were like something like this okay just more or less platform number one it was in zero and platform number two it was uh, basically uh, one screen okay one screen the size of the one screen so it was here its value imagine here it was the point then when this thing got to this value i wanted to pass to this part next to this one and they move they move they move they move and they go together they go together okay so they go together and they move they move like this and we see that this is not like that like is like one and when we get here, this one got to zero, the number one, uh, just the number one, I'm sorry. This one went to here, and again they started moving, 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 moving. Okay, so well, that was the idea with this, okay? So now, to make this thing to work, we create a condition with multiple variables. First, for the platform number one, the one that it was on the left, okay, that it was close to zero. If the position of the platform uh, sprite in the x-axis was bigger or more than uh, the canvas width minus the platform sprite width okay we are going to set this thing the platform sprite to the platform sprite 2 minus the platform sprite with the position of the platform 2 minus the width of the platform sprite okay of the platform 2 okay so how is this thing? Maybe it sounds like a little weird, but imagine, first my condition is to see if this value is not bigger than the canvas, okay? Because this is moving to this part, this is moving to this part, this is moving... Ah, well, I show you in the opposite part, sorry, sorry, because we are using the other direction. So, well, let's check it here. Everything is moving like this, okay, to the right. So this goes here, and this goes here. When we start, this is the original part. Sorry, I made a mistake over there. But check, everything is moving to the right in this case, because my area is facing left. So everything is moving like this. When we got to the size of this, remember that the, ori the origin of the sprites are in the corner, okay? in the upper left corner so like here so here is the position of these sprites so in this case it, it cannot be bigger than the size of the canvas but we can get this value just subtracting from the size of the canvas 
the width of the canvas minus the width of the of the of the sprite let's say for instance that all the canvas i mean these three things are like let's say that they are 600 okay so the whole canvas it's 600 so that means that the screen is 200 okay so the screen is just 200 here 200 200 200 600 okay so now to know what is the position of here we need to subtract all my all my sprites for example the platform sprite one and two they are 200 so i use the size of one screen so this is 200 so to know what is the position here for the sprite it is just 600 minus 200 it is 400 so that's why i subtract this value so canvas width imagine imagine let's suppose that is 600 600 minus this one that is the platform sprite the width it is uh, 400 so if we are in 400 okay in a value that is bigger or equal to 400 well we're going to change the position of the x of the, the platform sprite one we are going to set it here to the x position of platform number two minus the width of this same platform so how can what is that so we are here we got to the limit and we know that it is 400 the position if we are in 400 we need to change the position the position is going to change to this the position in x of this one that maybe this one it is getting to is this is zero to 200 it is in 200 200 okay minus the width of this one that is we know that is 200 it is equal to zero and we go to zero okay so and that's the way it returns then platform number two moves and moves and moves and moves and moves and gets to this part again platform number two the same thing gets to 400 but let's suppose it is 400 so now we are going to set them to the opposite now well to the other side now based on this one so now you know what check the position of the platform number one that is here that is in 200 minus the size of the width of this 200 minus 200 and it's quite zero and it get again and then it will loop okay so these ones will loop okay please analyze very well this very carefully these blocks okay so i will move just this a little bit here to make it you can pause the video here and analyze these two okay the connection then for the mountain it was uh quite the same you check if the mountain um here this is the mountain its position it is the same it is not more than the width minus the width of the mountain sprite okay if that is happening we set it to zero in that case to zero it is not like this why not set it to zero because sometimes i want it to move according to the position of the previous frame to to, to simulate that they are together or joined or something like that okay so the mountain uh, doesn't need this thing okay so the mountain gets to zero and then starts moving 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 okay and the same for the cloud the cloud i did the same and um, for the cloud i just use two sprites if you check um we have this um sprite number one that it's mm, not smiling and then i said hey you know what when you get to the limit okay so the limit number is bigger so that's why it's like kind of disappeared okay so i want you to change to check if you picture this cloud well change it to cloud to the point png but if not change it to cloud number one and that's it maybe in this case it's going to come with smiley face okay um just let's wait a little bit 
I mean, it's a little bit slow because I set it very slow with value for this one. Let me, let me clean this while we wait for the cloud. So again, you can set the values for this uh, the way you prefer. So that's why I insert this condition. I check is the other graphic. Okay, so that's the idea. You can set like two graphics for the clouds. One it's at one speed and the other to the other speed. Okay, so you can do this like that. So now. I set the cloud sprite to X when we get to the limits and the position at the 20%. Then, else, so this is the else condition. So if we are not in the limits, we are going to in increase the position of the sprites. So by, uh, we're going to increase by the value of the global speed. In this case, I am using the same speed for the platform one and platform two. The mountain sprite is using a different speed. So, so I said its position plus so its current position plus global speed divided by eighty. So that makes it slower, slower than the background. In this case, I want the cloud to be slower, but not too much, and I set it divided by thirty-five. So if you divide it by a bigger number, it will be really slow. Or if you divide it by a smaller number, it will be a little bit faster. So that's basically the idea with this animation. And of course, then we can insert like jumping thing for Mario and enemy, simple enemy that is coming here and he has to jump. And that's it. Okay. And the clock, it is just like updating this procedure. Remember for this clock, I use, I guess, 48 for the background. So it is fine, it is like 24 frames per second or something like that. Okay, well, but basically that is the idea about this simple app. So if you want me to make this like a full, full, full tutorial, like making step by step, please just let me know in the comments. I guess it is quite understandable in this way, just explaining the blocks. I'm going, uh, I'm going to pass the blocks really slow just to, for you to check the blocks here. Okay. Let's make them bigger. And that's it. And well, as I do this, my name is Eduardo. Thanks for watching this. If you need the resource file, I mean, all the source file that is the graphics or all of this uh, AIA file uh, for App Inventor and you want to use it, or to improve it or something to do well you need to check my patreon page okay i have all of these things i'm trying to make this thing for uh, i don't know to promote myself okay and to get some patrons okay i want to make some i have to be honest i need to work for this okay i spend some time and well that is the idea so let's check here the blocks first block first procedure Not necessary. Remember, first we resize everything and we place everything. All of this procedure about resizing and placing everything or scaling, it was inserted in a clock that is the loading clock. I disable this clock when we finish, uh, when we load this like five times, or we do it like five times. Then uh, I just drag a sprite, like in this case I use a circle, just to use it as a button. And I insert here the next procedure, that is the star gain. Check it. This is star gain. Basically the idea with this star gain is appear Mario, scale Mario, position Mario and enable the clocks for the animation that is the any clock for mario and the background clock the position of mario and y remember this is the position check it and that's it then for the animation procedure of mario i use this thing i will show you that i insert in a clock I created a variable, a procedure, and here are the blocks. You can pause the video. 
Also in my Patreon page, I will uh, post this uh, project and also the screenshot of the blogs for you or for patrons to use. You just have to patrons. That's pretty sad. Then I have this speed for the moving uh, background and scroll and everything. I set up speed that is 40. I create this procedure. I need to, I was using this condition just to detect if uh, the platforms, I used the platform, remember the platform number one, it was on the limits because it was moving to the right, the limits to the right, if that, well, if we set it again to the beginning. Remember, remember the, um, the canvas, it, it was set three times the size of the screen. Okay, just let me move this thing for you to see. a little bit and basically that is the idea for the cloud I use two sprites just to change them every time we change then we get to the limit okay. and finally to move everything I just was uh, updating his current position plus the speed if you wanted to make it slower you use a bigger number so in this case 80 so mountain was moving quite slow, very slow and cloud sprite it was a little bit faster because it was using a smaller number in this case okay we divide it I guess that's all well that was the this video that I wanted to show you okay I hope you enjoy maybe I will add something uh, about an enemy and uh, this kind of a uh, jumping thing that we have seen in other videos okay so you can check my other videos and you can implement that thing in this uh, simple app okay so my name is Eduardo I hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, and I will see you next time please comments doubts questions uh, here in the comments you can uh, get there okay or in my Facebook page pages I can have two that I'm working now okay so, I will see you next time, please uh, be happy, see you, ah, please share this video with someone who's learning an app inventor, okay? And if you have curiosity, please visit my Patreon page if you want to get this uh, source file. Goodbye, my name is Eduardo, and I will see you next time.